Welcome back, everybody, to Deb Chanel's 40 Squirrel, where we're going to be discussing Season 11, Episode 17 of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Welcome to the dungeon. Let's get right on to it. We got Portia and Candy and Marlo. They meeting up to have a little light lunch together and to talk about past events from Nene Leak's bi party and what happened and why Nene was acting this way. And Portia was like, well, I ain't going to really get into it because if I say what I'm going to say, it might just put her out of a job and some legal ramifications may come about. So we're just going to keep it like that. And uh, then we go to Shamara. Shamara comes over to talk with Eva about what had happened, what had transpired, what she really can remember. Then Tanya comes over, Eva's house, and the three women start talking. And uh, she said, only thing I remember, meaning Shamara, she talking about, I threw up on your shoes, and I am so sorry for that. I, I just so sorry for it. Then Tanya was like, girl, ain't all you did, honey. You was feeling on my private parts. You were going over there trying to munch on Eva's breasts, and you were just doing a lot. Shamar was like, what? She said, but honey, I uh, consider you, this is what Tanya's talking about, I consider you good friends because... You you just saw males, you know. I, I like it and I like being with you and stuff. But we sister girls now because I cleaned up your poop in um Nene's house. So everything cool. We ain't we ain't got no discussion. We ain't upset about nothing. We good we good. So um Jamara starts to really start thinking that oh girl, she was out of control. She was totally out of control, but for some crazy reason she liked it. And, uh, you know, it just is what it is. Then we got Candy and uh, Portia. Uh, they talking on camera again about what really happened. And, you know, they trying to tell us the uh, reason why Nene was acting all crazy when Marla was saying. Y'all knew she was kind of under the weather. You know, she'd been worried and this, that, and the third. And, and then Candace said, well, yeah, I understand that, but good Lord, did you hear what she said? And something must have happened to the effect that they didn't show us on TV. So it must got real dark and dirty after them cameras stopped rolling where we could see it. Because it was some tears filled, but they weren't giving us nothing and Bar Bravo Show cut it out. So I'm thinking it must have been some legalities there where it's going to make Nene look very bad. But Nene told y'all, she said, don't go in the closet. Don't, don't go in the closet. Don't go there. Don't, don't, don't disrespect me. By going in my closet. Hey, going in my closet. That's a no no. That's a no no. This is my house. Respect my house. That's what Nene was giving us, okay? But Nene was kind of laughing it off and whatnot because I'm pretty sure she gave a firm uh, voice, voice expression like, look. I know I don't want in your closet, just that in the third, but really my closet is messed up. Um, um, next time you come over here, I'll make sure you would get a full-fledged view of my closet, because I know I don't been in y'all closet, so I know what y'all saying, you know, one turn deserves another, you went in mine, I'm going in yours, and just then a third, or really candy them, candy and Porsche at that time, they could have went in there, once they heard and saw and gave their ooze and off, they should have came on out of the closet, you know what I'm saying, but, you know, the cameraman being sneaky, as Nene them said, or tried to give us the impression that they were going a little further than what she had wanted them to do. Because, like I said, I think she would have let Candy and uh, Portia go on back there. Because they were doing some ooing and owing. And, you know, Nina likes to be the showboat. So, just as long as you ooing and owing, you know, just know where you saw it from first, you know. And uh, that was good for her ego. But when the cameraman trying to start going in places and stuff where they ain't got no business... You know, I could see her getting a little antsy and trying to put the brakes on it. Like, come on out, girls, because they're trying to, you know, impart on my, uh, they're trying to infringe on my privacy. Y'all already done did the do, but y'all ain't really showed nothing, you know, 
It's just you all see it from y'all picture, y'all mind, y'all keep it there. But as far as TV, it being shown to the millions of Americans that's tuning in to the real uh, Housewives of Atlanta Bravo special sitcom. Oh, we can't do that. Because we don't want no tax players saying nothing. And, you know, it, it could be the RS looking for me and this, that, and the third. And then they have everything on paper. To say, oh, well, you got this, this, this. We need this, that, and that. You know, the other. So I could understand where Nene was going with that situation. She was like, come on out the closet. Don't go in my closet. But hard-headed Portia and Candon did not follow suit. They went on anyway. They got their buzz beat. But anyway, um, Portia was kind of trying to say Nene was, you know, going in on Candy. This was the part we didn't really get a chance to see because, you know, Bob was like, mm -mm, we ain't finna get into nothing. We don't want nobody claiming this, that, and the third. And then we saw our own folks for legality reasons. And, you know, ah, we ain't finna go there, okay? So, uh, but Portia was kind of trying to spill the tea on, you know, the inside scoop. Uh, Candy was pretty much letting it all the way out. But uh, Portia like, no, nah, we ain't going to talk about it because if I talk about it, the situation going to be uh, for the negative towards me and Nene's uh, relationship. And I ain't got time for that. I'm living in my life. I'm living my best life. I ain't got time for no negativity. Negativity. I'm living my best life. That's what Portia said. She got a man. She got a soon to be husband. She got a baby on the way. Everything's look lovely to her. And, you know, just, to, you know, mention something, you know. That she done definitely gotten over. She don't want to take it no further. So she just let Nene be on the little hot seat for right now. But she ain't going to take it no further. She ain't going to turn up the burners a little higher for her to fry. So uh, Marlo was like, well, what's going on? Because I don't remember none of that happening. I just don't remember. And then <laughs> Portia said, you ain't Dora to explore, honey. You ain't Miss Dory. You, you you remember. You just don't want to remember. Okay, you you got a selective memory going on. That's all it is. That's all it is, my love. Cause you know you you heard you heard. Okay, and um, you know still Marla's looking very perplexed about what Portia said. And, oh, excuse me, y'all. Can't know exactly what she's saying. But she want Portia to bring it out. And if she has to back up Portia just for TV time, she's going to do that, too. But anyway, she was like, no, then he was going in on us. She really went on candy. And then we were trying to leave. Ooh, Lord. And then he just really went off the bat. She went off their end. So, um... She was saying, well, why would Nene take your belt? Because that belongs to your dress, which was tightly wrapped around your waist. So what, you left uh, Nene's house without your belt? You trying to say Nene took off your belt? Portia said, mm-mm, I ain't going there with that. I ain't finna talk about it no more. And that's just what Portia left it. I said, Portia, my girl, Portia, keep it on the down low. That's right. That's right. It ain't for everybody else. If you didn't catch the tea and try to formulate your own opinions, then forget it. You ain't get no more from her. That's what Portia said. Portia ain't, Portia's out, okay? Out for the count. And then um, she was saying, well, you know, Nene's on a lot of stress. And, you know, y'all shouldn't have been in her closet from the get go. But y'all took y'all little rusty vines on in there after she was trying to say don't go in her closet. It might have been playful, and she might was not as stern as she needed to be, or she should have been. Uh, then y'all would have had a clue, but you know, y'all did it. So I'm just glad nobody got really hurt. But Portia was like, mm hmm, mm hmm. I ain't gonna talk about it. Well, Portia said, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna talk about this situation anymore. Okay, cause the footage, the unseen footage, the footage that they uh. We call it edit it out. It just is what it is. You just had to be there. And since she wasn't, it's okay. Moving on. All right. Then we got Marla was talking about uh Porsche and Candy, you know, you know, just understanding Nene's situation and the incident. And just let bygones be bygones. And she was saying, Well, have y'all reached out to Nene and apologized to her and just that third? And Candy was like, Well, yeah, I texted her and told her I was sorry and everything. And Porsche was like, No, wait a minute. Talk Porsche talking to herself, you know, like we all do here and there when we try to we confused about something that went down that shouldn't went down the way it was. Because we had another plan. 
uh, in place, but she's looking like, no, wait a minute, me and Candy was supposed to come together as one, you know, in the front and uh, address Nene together. Now, this little woman that went over there in the in my face, in my presence, telling me that she don't talk to Nene already, leaving me out in the cold, like, I ain't uh, sorry about nothing. You know what I'm saying? Well, how how rude is that? Now, I thought me and Candy was on the same team, but you see how she did your Porsche? You see, girl, sometimes you just have to do the big girl thing and go on apologize, do what you got to do, and keep it moving, okay? Because Candy showed across them bridges and dotted her eyes and crossed her teeth, left you in the dark, girl. She told me I went in Nene's closet. It turned out to be a total debacle. Aquaman, and I had to get back on good graces with Nene. So I just thought I'd just reach out to her on my own. Forget you, Portia, okay? So anyway, Portia caught that tea and she's like, mm-mm, never again, never again, never again, Candy, with the dungeon going on. But anyway, um, you know, sometimes you gotta handle situations individually, and Portia's learning and growing, and I'm liking that. But you know, she still kind of felt some kind of way against Candy, but a negative, you know, towards the negative because of Candy's actions. But anyway, um, she was just saying that, uh, well, Portia was telling Marla plus Candy that, you know, they still need to talk to Nene because they all friends, they all taped together, you know, they kind of try to have a positive rapport with one another. But we were gotta, you know, we really gotta talk about talk to Nene about her rage and her anger because it's not good. You know, no one wants the, the friends to be treated that way, and she shouldn't want us to be treated that way by her hands, okay? So I was like, okay, Portia, that's right. You know, she got you a few seasons ago about your anger and can't control, and she's telling you not to put her hands, uh, your hands on people just to get them to understand where you're coming from, and then, you know, Nene trying to put hands on folks, but well, she got the cameraman for a show. Now, whether she got a hold of you and Candy behind them closed doors, off them cameras, I don't know, because the cameras was like, like they were falling on the floor, how Nene was getting a hold to them, so we never know, but glad you took that in some account that we need to talk to her about her actions uh, for a change. And so, you know, the ladies kind of, too, you know, pretty much had got over that situation. So Marlo started talking about, okay, now tell us about this dungeon party you're going to be throwing, you know, uh, no pun intended, but you know, it's the sixth dungeon thing came over uh, some seasons ago when Porsche trying to say, you know, uh, Todd and Kenny was trying to take advantage of her. They was going to take her into this sixth dungeon. Well, <laughs> what Kenny had once called uh, ruining her career, putting salt on her name, and all of this, when Portia had accused her of having a sex dungeon and want to, you know, partake with her in it without her permission. She's trying to make this dungeon thing come alive. Now, that is, you know, hey, coincidental? I don't know. You know, but look, however you think about it is you, okay? Or uh, how you want to remember uh what Candy had said and did and you know wanted Portia to pay double handed over for apologizing over excessively about this situation because it was costing her. It was hitting her pocket and uh negatively and she was like trying to you know put Portia out to pasture. Portia out to pasture with her dealings and bringing all that negativity her way with this sex dungeon. So now Candace capitalizing on it and bringing it to the forefront. And Portia's like, mm-mm, I ain't finna be a part of that. You know, that's what got us our friendship the first time. So I'm gonna let that go. Y'all gonna have a good time with this sex party dungeon thing. And, you know, keep, keep cancel me out. Keep me out of it. So then Candy gonna make a smart remark about, oh, she really would. It was her idea from the beginning. But you ain't paying for it, Candy. You ain't paying for it, girl, so stop it. So the girl says she don't want to go, or the lady says she don't want to go. She ain't coming. I'm, I'm like, all right. That's right, Portia. Go on and live your best life with your man, your soon-to-be uh, husband, and your baby on the way. Yes, live your life. So we leave that situation. We go to Portia and Eva and Eva's friend. They out together. Um... Well, I'm sorry, not Portia, but um, Eva and Cynthia and her friend. They had a spa day to try to get a colonic, uh, where it drains a lot of feces out of you and it makes you feel lighter than what you are. And just that and third, I don't know why Cynthia calling her man, telling him what uh, her man was calling her. And she was telling him what she was adding, what she was getting done. I was like, oh, no. 
Oh, no, Cynthia and her no story line self. Okay, but I like Cynthia. I do. Like all the women. Like all the women on the show. Okay, then, you know, Eve was trying to bring in her waist for her wedding. That's why she's saying she needs this detox, this cleansing detox uh, colonic thing going on. And she goes on to talk to Cynthia about her uh, wedding budget, how 85000 was the cost of her uh, wedding and preparations, and she went over by 50000 And, you know, she's telling Cynthia, and Cynthia's reminiscing on when she threw her wedding and how much she was uh, going to be spending out and Peter spending money. Her mom and sister trying to hide the divorce, I mean, the divorce from uh, marriage certificate. And just, it was just playing a real bad picture, painting a real bad picture and Cynthia and she's like, girl, I know what you're talking about. She said, that is stressful. I'm like, women, it wouldn't be so stressful. You just take it to the courthouse and throw you a big old party. Or better yet, just, you know, downsize it. You don't have to have it at a cost of a house, okay? The, when Eva was going around with this eighty five, fifty thousand over budget, uh, looking like it's costing her. About thirty five hundred, well, one hundred and thirty five thousand. That you could buy a house for that, Eva in Atlanta. Yes, a house, girl, in the country. You know, Covington, Rockdale, places like that. And with a lot of land to boot, but you putting it all on a wedding that's not even decided that you're gonna spend the rest of your life with this man. You know what I'm saying, girl? But anyway, you know, she's okay. We did that. I had to go, you know, work a little bit more. You know, get my hustle on and get this wedding paid for but it's paid for i don't owe nobody and just that in the third i'm like okay evil from your mouth to god's ears and i hope that is true i hope you don't be coming you know later on and in, in future episodes and seasons of the weird housewives of atlanta how much you still owe for your way and i don't want to hear that now okay but if you want to floss like that go ahead i hope you sleep well at night Hoping things come together, but anyway, not my business. That's yours, and you seem to look very pretty on your wedding because the dress that you finally call yourself picking out did look very nice, very nice, very elegant uh, uh, for your day. Um, but then we go to, since it's talking to Eva about Nini's breakdown, her meltdown and whatnot, you know, Nini's the center of attention, I guess, because she got fined for pulling up... Um, the, the uh, cameraman's uh, out of her closet and stretching his shirt and stuff like that. So I guess she couldn't be taped during this season. I mean, during this episode, she hadn't missed this out because of a fine she had to pay by putting her hands on somebody. Uh, so we were like, okay. So everybody really, you know, well, it really wasn't in Cynthia and Candy and Portia making it a storyline, but I could understand and see. Portia's and Candace part because they were explaining what was going on behind the scenes of that pulling of the cameraman and the uh, whole fussing about them being in her closet. But uh, Cynthia, you know, she was in the midst of it, but she wasn't back down. But it just seemed like she making her storyline on this episode with everything about Nene. You know, let's give Nene, you know, some prayers, which we all should. Uh, and she's definitely going through with uh, Greg, and she's not being the center of attention, and she's having to have to give more uh, Greg's way of uh, empathy and sympathy that she's not used to because all of that used to go to her uh, by someone else. So. She's struggling with, um, I guess, just not being the uh, center of attention or something. Or maybe she just really can't handle Greg going downhill or whatnot. And, and she's thinking, who's going to be with her? Who, who knows? You know, maybe she's grieving in her own little way, and that's okay. But I just wish she would express it some other kind of way because it's just looking like she's selfish. And I would hope that Nene is not that type of woman, okay? But this is just what the camera's giving us on what they're editing and cutting around, okay? But uh, it was a complete invasion of privacy, Cynthia was saying, that Candy and uh, Portia had took a part of going in her closet when she specifically said no. But, you know, Nene wasn't... She didn't have that stern note on her, so the, the the ladies just went on and thought they just going to do what they got to do, okay, which is be nosed. But anyway, uh, we got Shamara and Ronnie. They're talking about uh, him going out of town and how she's going to miss him, how she want him there, and she's talking about how she's going to have to be a single woman now. 
oh, uh, while he's going out of town because she ain't got no help. She's going to be, you know, holding down the fort at home and with the kids. And then she's going to try to still revive her career that's been on the back burner for so long. And she goes in the tail running, you know, what um, the women had said she had did at Nene's party and how she remembers some of it. Some of it she don't remember, but it all got her looking some kind of way. Then Tanya, you know, she was telling Ronnie how Tanya was saying she was feeling all on her and, you know, the incident where she was munching on Eva's breast and everybody seemed to be liking it. So she didn't see no harm. And he was like, yeah, but these tendencies, you got to be loving on these women. It's going to create a problem for our situation. And uh, so he's basically just telling her, you know, calm, you know, you need to calm down because it might lead to a separation, which you don't want. And she was trying to, you know, re, um, I don't want to say recertify, but she was trying to re, uh, iterate that she's fully into her marriage with him and she don't want another woman. And uh, she, she, you know, she just want a, a monogamous relationship, but you know, Shamara not acting that way. And I don't know if she does have a drinking problem or, or, or starting to have a drinking problem, or she's just letting her hair down when she's dealt with the ladies. But you know, letting your hair down with the ladies when you're filming is a different kind when you're not filming, and you really don't want all of this negativity. Is what uh, Ronnie was saying, not publicly anyway, because people are going to judge you on what they see you do on TV. It's natural. It's common. And, you know, if they don't have the fourth sight of um, definitely looking at a situation and saying, well, you know, they just putting on for the camera. She ain't really that way. You know what I'm saying? But then you have the ones uh, naysayers saying, no, nah, she is just like that. And that's just how she is, you know, without giving her the benefit of the doubt. So, Sherry Mara, she's not that young to know right from wrong and what you do in public and what you do behind closed doors. You know what I'm saying? Privacy is all we're talking here or talking about. Nothing else. Just keeping things private for yourselves and not for everybody else to partake of or know of. Uh, so, he was just saying, you know, you need to, you know, calm down some, uh, my lady, calm down. Uh, consequences, you know, comes from bad reactions, you know, from doing things, you're going to have some consequences that are not going to be fortunate for you. So, evidently, he's kind of over uh, the whole thing about bringing people into their relationship. It's, it's supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one relationship between a man and a woman, and they unite as one. Not no woman on the side, not no, uh, you know, other woman for him on the side, you know what I'm saying? So, He's just really trying to tone her down and make her be serious about this reality show as well as her real life. Uh, then we got Portia and her sister talking about what had happened. Well, first they're talking about Portia's reveal party. And Dennis don't want all this reveal thing. He just want to know what the sex is when the baby's coming out her, her uh, vagina, basically, or her stomach, however she delivers. And she like, uh-uh, I want people to know. I want party. I want presence. And, and, and this, that, and the third. So she's pretty much throwing her own little shindig of a baby reveal. And she's going over, uh, you know, telling her sister Lauren what, you know, had happened. And, and Nene's get together. And, you know, yeah, she was wrong, her and Candy. And they're going to try to squash it and just forgive everybody. And. Lawrence was asking her, well, who are you going to invite to the party? She said, well, I'm inviting everybody. You know, I ain't got no uh, ill will to nobody. I'm grown. I'm living my best life. And, you know, this is how it is. Then, you know, she talks about how Candy and her were supposed to be a united front. They supposed to go address Nene together about the fault and apologize for what they played a part of, you know, of her bad day when it came to her weird party and how it transpired for the negative. And, you know, how Candy had, you know, did a side deal and went on to talk to her by herself. And, you know, Lauren was like, I ain't even want to go there. You know, that just is what it is. You want to hang with Candy, then you hang with her. But you know she's shady anyway. And then we got Candy. She's over there finalizing her burlesque show, you know, the dungeon, the sex dungeon with her choreographer. And making finalization of plans and this, that, and the third. And she's waiting for Shamari to come over and practice with her and stuff. And then Shamari shows up. Um, 
Yeah, she shows up with her husband, Ronnie, and, you know, they go over into, you know, role playing of what they're going to do. And it seems like it's very nice. Going to drop it off real nice. And then um, Ronnie is listening to Candy talk about how the show is going to um, prevail itself to the audience and what she's going to be featuring in the show, et cetera. Um, Candy was basically telling everybody, as, as well as Shamara and Ronnie DeVoe, that she wants wildness. She wants that shock factor, and this and this is what her aim is to uh, bring out in her show. Okay, then we got Cynthia shows up with her boo and Candy, you know, practicing, and you know she's supposed to be a part of the show, which is a total mess. You know, she need to be sitting down somewhere and just looking, you know, off stage. But you know, she really don't have storyline, so we gotta let Cynthia be. I let her go where we can put her, you know, because they didn't want her to practice or anything because it's just going to be an impromptu. And, um, you know, she still don't look right, like I said, with the guy that she called herself dating and want to marry. You know, I'm like, oh, Lord, you know, it's just a hot mess. Then we got Eva shopping again for a wedding uh, dress, boring scene, you know, beautiful dress, but boring scene. We ain't really got to talk about it. Uh... But one thing it did come to pass about, you know, that Yvonne or Yvonne, we want to call her, that's how her name looked like it's spelled anyway. She invites the girl that uh, Eva says she don't even know who she was talking about. But the girl's name is Tiffany. She shows up at her wedding. So for a person that you say you didn't know, when Yvonne was trying to make you know about her, she uh, mysteriously shows up. So I'm like, okay, okay, all right then. It is what it is. Okay, now we finally see the chick. We're going to move on. Then we got Candace. She's finally arrived to her burlesque show. Uh, everybody's arriving as far as the participants in her show. Getting everything together. Then Shamar going to come up talking about she got a, she caught a cold over the night. And she can't sing. <laughs> Candy looked at her like, girl, please. We already got you from previous sessions when we were practicing. Everything's loaded up on a cassette or disc, or whatever they do, uh, flash drive, and that music gonna play, it's gonna be so loud, ain't nobody gonna realize if you're singing or not, boo, okay, so just lip sync it, <laughs> give us your best Millie Vanilli, uh, intro, okay, intro, so she like, okay, no problem, they hug it out, um, uh, and then Candace still talking many different projects she's gonna be working on now and in the future, bring up the surrogacy again, and I'm like, oh, Candy, leave that ideal alone, okay, leave it alone, then, you know, Cynthia comes in, she's in her little outfit, and, you know, this, that, and the third, and then the, the show actually takes place, and everything is very sexual, very, um, you know, I don't know, very um, seductive-wise, uh, seducing-wise, all that's being played out and uh, viewed for us, shown to us, uh, the viewers. And she brings Cynthia on stage, and Cynthia just looked like somebody grandma. Uh, basically, she don't know what to do, don't know what to say. Candy goes down on her and says, you know, how wet are you? And it just takes Cynthia by surprise. She don't know what to say. And I said, see, that's what I'm saying. Cynthia, you're too old, baby. Get out of that role. Be, you should have been like Marlo. Off stage, you're a seasoned, uh, very well disciplined um, woman. You 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 just out for the count when it comes to this kind of uh, showing and, and and displaying yourself. If you're not comfortable with it, you know Peter was right. Uh, mm -mm. You're a good business woman. You know you're a good mother. You're a good friend. But when it comes to being, you know, a garden tool on you know. On stage trying to flaunt your assets, that's not good. You can't do it. You can't bring it off. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I give you an F in that one. Just come on off the stage, okay? Then um, somehow Marlo get pushed down by Tanya for some reason. They're going around in the back playing and stuff. This is after the show. The show was a very big success. You know, if you like that seductive, sexual, burlesque type scene, you know, she pulled it off. Everybody was happy. Um, then Marlo goes in on Shamia, Shem talking about, I'm worried about you. Do we have to put you in an AAA meeting or, or have you, 
um, partake of some of those meetings because I think you have a little alcohol problem. <laughs> I'm like, Marlo, how long have you known Shamara, baby, to even say, you know, is she just letting her hair down when she's around other women because she's, you know, tied up with being a wife and a mother so much. She don't have that outlet. You know, can we disagree from that? But Marlo, like, I'm, I'm just worried about you, honey. I'm just worried about you. <laughs> and Sharia, like, don't worry about me. I ain't no drunk. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> that was so fun. I'm like, when did Marlo want to play somebody mama and tell them to slow down on the alcohol? Okay. Blame it, blame it, blame it on the alcohol. <laughs> Marla, like, girl, you better go somewhere. She should have been talking to Tanya because Tanya wasn't push on the floor. Not Shabari. But, um, y'all, it, it was okay. It was an okay show. Uh, basically, I'm like, where is Nene Lee signing? Nene show out. She said, these clowns done came on my house and got me upset and disrupt my atmosphere and my environment. Now I ain't coming to none of your events. <laughs> I'm going to take me a break. I'm going to take me a sabbatical uh, from them. I don't want to be seen or heard with them ever again. But nah, she just took it to where she had to take this scene out and, you know, do what she had to do for herself and Greg and her family. And, you know, it just is what it is with them clowns going in her closet when she told them, don't go there. But they went anyway. You know, they young, young women trying to do the darn thing, looking up to their mentor, or if you want to call them, your mentor. But all of it kind of probably got taken out of context and went a little bit too far. And the cameraman wanted the drama because that's what uh, most people tune in, tune in to these reality shows are for the drama. Uh, no sensibility anywhere. They just want to feel somebody else's drama for a while and get a little kiki's here, a little laughter there. And, you know, it is what it is. But um, that was my take on and review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta for season 11, episode 17. Welcome to the dungeon. All right, guys. Y'all have a good night. Share my videos, like my videos, and definitely subscribe to my channel. Have a good one. Bye-bye.